Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, August 23rd. I ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. I will entertain a motion to ratify the expense warrant for 816, ratify the payroll warrant for 816, approve the wire transfer for 810, and approve the expense warrant for 823. I will make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, announcements. Volunteers, yet again, are needed to serve on several town committees, including the Advisory Committee, Local Public Access Committee, Conservation Committee, and numerous others. Letter of interest should be submitted to the Board of Selectmen, 6 Central Street, Brookfield, Mass., 01506. Email selectmen at brookfieldma.us or simply call at 508-867-29. That's okay. 2930 uh, with extension 10 for the Selectman's office. Um, I've, I was given this a lot of thought this morning. Um, I understand people's busy schedules. Uh, I, I think the only understanding of, of maybe a lot of people in town is seeing what we do here and the amount of work that we put in. All of these committees, and it's not to go against them, what they do, every single individual that serves for this town makes this town a better town. Whatever possible time that you can give would make these committees better and would make this town better. So if you can give an hour, give a two hour period in a month, two months, we need you. Please, have any interest in any of these committees, please give us a call. We need you, we'd love to have you. Uh, State Representative Donnie Berthian will be holding office hours from 5 to 6 p.m. Tuesday, six, September 6 at the Town Hall. Any other announcements? Hearing none, anybody wish to address the board this evening? Ladies first. Welcome, ma'am. Oh, Barbara. Why wouldn't we want you? Good evening, ma'am. I am concerned about a few things. Uh, it's so hard to know what's going on over here that you, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Finally, you have a list of meetings posted out there, so at least we know when you meet. You have to keep in mind that a lot of us do not have computers, not including myself, I do. And even when we do, we're not very good at getting through them. So have you talked to Mike about that? Because that's basically his responsibility to post those? I am talking to you as the town. Well, the, the town clerk is an elected official. We don't have Well, power. that's another, that's another thing I'd like to talk with you about is my feeling has always been that if you're an elected official, you're nonpartisan completely because you're working for the town or you're representing the town. And I take issue with these, which I know is later in the agenda, these signs that are up when we are asking Senator Gobi to look for money for us and to help us, we should not be going against her. What you do in the voting box is your business. So can I take a spin off that? You may. What, what you do on your primary residence is your business I as well. understand that, but as a person, I would never put something on my front lawn that was political nationwide or statewide because the two positions I hold, I should not give my opinions. I'm just saying that. Well, I, I respect your opinion, but at yeah, the same time... Well, I just think you need to look at that, because it doesn't look nice to Senator Goldby, I'm sure. You're talking to a person that ran against her twice, so... I know, I know, but I would have put her sign or your sign if someone had asked me, but uh, not a one that almost could be on the Empire State Building. And uh, thirdly, the Council on Aging has been asked by West Brookfield at the Senior Center, their director, would we consider perhaps being able to join them with some funds from, we know, funds from here, kind of like a regional thing. 
I know that's not going to happen this year, but I didn't want to get in trouble for not telling you something that was going on. I figured you should know that we're going, we are meeting trying to figure out how we can have programs that incorporate both. Because I, I, I think that's a great idea, I, 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 especially yeah, I with that. I thought you should. My you know, only knee-jerk reaction is a lot of the money that you get is uh, through grants, so you might want to double check. To make well, no, we get seven thousand dollars in grants. But you want, you want to make sure that you can do that legally? If this well, you don't take it out of our grant. Okay. We're asking you for town money. All right. Our grant is already used for everything that <clears throat> the seniors need. I'm not opposed to that at all. No. Yeah. Okay. That's what I wanted to say to you. See, it was a pleasant exchange. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. And maybe if you can get something out there and we know, like I didn't know till today what your agenda was, uh, you get people to come. And then we won't all be buzzing a week from now that, when did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Taft, you want to come up? Welcome, sir. Good evening. Um, I went in and talked with uh, the town clerk and asked him if it is uh, legal it, during a posted town meeting, uh, committee meeting, if you are a committee member, and if you cannot attend that meeting, can you attend it via a conference call? You can, we, we established a policy for that. He did, he wasn't sure, so I just wanted to ask to be sure that that was okay. All right, great, thank you. And you, you're aware that there is a policy and it's very specific, it's laid out of exactly what can be done? Uh, no, does Mike have that? The selectman's office <coughs> have that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Am I next? You're next. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, you guys discussed the smokes, smoke alarms in the town hall. I brought it up to you about a month ago. I want to know where we stand and what's, what's happening. We haven't discussed it here, but um, Mr. Mansfield is going to deal with that when he gets back to school when school starts, and he has been communicating with the fire chief, so it it's, hasn't been lost. It hasn't been not lost. So you were still. It, it, it's hinging. It hinges on the kids and being in school. To do smokes all through the building. Well, they have to devise a plan. It has to be approved by this board, and then. It well, I understand that. That's what I'm. Yeah, it hasn't been lost. That's what, okay. All right, I got another question here. Down, down between the two bridges, we had the bridge dedication. Okay, that little road that goes off the tracks. I don't know. So some private access, people access only. Access road, yeah. Someone put someone put no packing all the way down on both sides. I want to know who authorized it, and I want to know. We made that beautiful place down there for people to see the sunset, so on and so forth, and then you have no packing anywhere down there. Not true, but in your packet, Mr. Chairman, there is a... Uh, What's not true, Clarence? It's under other this. It's under other this. not true that there's no parking. It, there's packing down there, yes, but there's six... No packing on each, all the way down, both sides of the road. That is <clears throat> For the dedication of the birds. Clarence, you have yours? Yeah. Linda? No, So, So I have this, or you have this someplace else on the agenda. Do you want to do it now? It's under I can do it now. Okay. Where is where's it? I don't think it's on. It's in. It's under other. It's not on the agenda. Right. But. All right, so you're gonna just you want to discuss, we'll discuss it or it not? Right now, why not? Yeah, we'll okay, I'm now. just I'm just asking. And so what you what you have is yeah, actually I had two questions for me uh, when you called on Friday, and I, I understand that you've talked to the highway superintendent as well. I have, yes. And so uh, what I did is that as I said I would do, I took what you had under advisement and went and did some research. Mm -hmm. And so Good. what you have on page one uh, is the area of the new bridge and the observation area on one side and the boat ramp on the other. And the first picture shows you Mill Street where there are in fact 12 slots available mm -hmm. 450 feet <coughs> away from the boat ramp. On Mill Street? On Mill Street. Okay. Uh, absolutely right. 450 feet away. Okay, but right. that's okay. All right. That, We're getting a little away from, okay, but go ahead. Uh, You're uh, talking a okay. whole different deal, yeah, okay. David? Don't, don't try to make this in, don't try to water pass. this down because I'm not going to take it. Gentlemen, let, let Mr. Snyder talk to you. All right, All right. So, so the second page, or the right-hand side, um, which you have is a closer closer view. And uh, on one side you have the boat ramp, on the other side you have the observation. So mm -hmm. on, the, on your next page, what you have is access to the uh, boat ramp. And what you have is a, an area of about 15 feet. 
so there are no parking signs on either side of that because of the rest restricted area to get to the boat ramp. That's the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's so, the other side of what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, okay. So I don't see, I don't see any no parking on the bri on the uh, bridge access. I oh, see okay. it right here in the picture. Uh, on, on the bridge is, access. This is a this is a yeah. Google picture, an old yeah. Google picture. This is current. This is the boat ramp. Yep. This and is the boat ramp. That's, the boat no, ramp. that's no parking. This is no parking. No parking. Right here. No parking, right here. No yeah. That's okay. that's the boat access, but. We're talking. Yeah, we're right. only talking this. So there's only speed. signs painted on this. No, 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 no. We'll get to that other side. Right. All right. Let's let's so, yeah. Let's. So, we're so talking I'm, about with the dedicated <laughs> benches. Yep. To the right between the two bridges. Yep. I got okay. That picture here too. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I'm referring to. I'm not referring to everything else okay. in town. I, okay. But when I when you asked the question, okay. I felt it important that I gave you a complete answer. Okay, right, so go ahead. Well, I'm listening. This is your important one. I look right. to the third page. Okay. The second page is the boat ramp, and there are 12 slots. Unfortunately, if you first come for a serve, there is a spot there that you can park if you're the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Otherwise, you get 450. <coughs> Where are you water. pointing yeah. to, Clarence? What happens is that oh, down is the parking there. space yeah. here. This is no parking because this is your backing mm -hmm. into the boat. To, to yeah. be yeah. honest okay. with you, throughout this whole discussion that I've been part of, this has been going on for about four or five years. There was never a desire to have any parking down there. Well, there's one. But there, there was never one. a desire. The state didn't want it. We talked about not having it. The state actually bucked up for the concrete ramp okay. because the desire was to park on Mill Street and have that accessible. Right. So anyway, the, David had asked the question on either side, so I, I'm addressing both sides. Right, I just want to be clear with where we're at. All right. Now, David's other concern was the... No, my own, my one concern. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I okay. took it to be both sides of the road. No. So <clears throat> what we have on the other side of the road is that it has been marked. Mm -hmm. And it is an area where there is access back to, to the railroad tracks. That's correct. And so it is marked that that <clears throat> is a fire lane. That's been marked there too, yes. Yep, and so... Which it never was in the past. That's correct. Okay. And, and further, there are no parking signs down along. Both that's sides. Right. That's, that's correct. Right. From someone who's, on a, on a, just to digress a little bit, someone who's picked up that area on Earth Day more than once. Okay. I yeah. prefer no, no parking down in there anyway because every year it's, it's trashed. And so this is just a side story. Yeah, that's definitely a side so, story to so, what, what I'm so going to say. So from, from, from a curb here to the area where it says no parking, is 25 feet and a pumper truck to go to the railroad tracks is 10 feet wide so using the the other side of the street as, as an example mm -hmm. you have a plenty room, of room plenty, plenty of room. room to get down in there. plenty of room now what i think we're missing and and maybe is additional marking that we need is that there are in fact two spaces just bes beside the observation ramp that should be marked as potentially parking Oof. I don't. Need, I don't think we need all these signs and stuff. I mean, oh. what? Well, so, I mean, I'm, we I'm, built this nice place for the town, and now, mm -hmm. now you're just now you're saying to the townspeople, don't come down. We don't want well, you down there. That's what you're saying. I don't think that that's. Of I, course I, you are. You've plastered no packing signs all over the place. So, Dave, you're saying there's signs painted over on the other side now? No, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about the dedicated bench side only. Right. Yeah. So, which is the access to the railroad yeah. track. That's correct. So, That's what I mean by the other side. So okay. Dave, David's concerned because if, you, if you're looking at this view, at a point where you see my little arrow here, yes. yep. it starts to be marked all the way down, no parking. Mm -hmm. from, that, from that point down mm -hmm. on both sides of the yeah. access area. And what I'm suggesting is that there are, are two spaces for two cars to be parked in, a, in parallel by the observation deck. That's private property. It, it's a right of way. I don't think the town has any right to do anything over there. Well, that's number one. That, yeah. that, I think that that's it. Period. For for us to go over there, and even on the boat side ramp, to be honest with you, we just signed over, and it was it was known from day one that we were turning that property over to the state. For us to even put anything down there as well, I don't even know why we're wasting our time. 
wasting our time on what, Steve? Putting no parking signs on. I know. I mean, I mean, this is a nice little town, and now we're doing saying that would we make a nice place down here. Now you're saying we don't want you down there. No packing. Well, I, don't, I just don't get it. I mean, what's the purpose of we, we, putting those signs up to begin with? But we really can't have anybody parking on that boat ramp. That the, so if the sign Not the boat ramp now. We're talking yeah. about the bench the side, side, the dedicated mm -hmm. bench side. Don't get me on the boat ramp side because I, I'll, that, that's another whole disaster. I'm talking about the dedicated bench side, the right-hand side yeah. heading towards Sturbridge. It's between the two bridges where they just put that dedicated Joe Murray's bench. You had a nice little packing area and they're on both sides of the road and now it's plastered with no packing signs everywhere. I don't so know who that. authorized to put the no packing, number one, and number two, why was it done? And number three, some of it is private property. So if the guy who owns it doesn't want people packing down there, it's up to him to do it, not the town. So where does it, Clarence, where does the town's land start and stop? Oh, I have no idea. Because this isn't... Is this owned by the railroad? No, it's... Or is it owned by Mr. Blake? I know the Mr. railroad. We, we had to get a right away from Mr. Yeah. Is it Blaze? Or no, Blake? Mr. Blake. 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 We had to get a... Peter got a right away from him for this project. That's his property. <coughs> Mr. Chafee. Did you want to come up, Herb? There's three parcels of property there. <coughs> railroad, Blake, <coughs> and State. The whole access road is private, period. Belonging to? Blake. Rolly Blake. So then why did we take the time to put signs over there? Why? It's because when people block the whole access to get to the railroad tracks for emergency, that's the biggest problem. Before they took and did all that work, there was plenty of room there to park before. Didn't have any problems. <clears throat> Now all of a sudden, we got problems. We got people going down there and throwing the trash on the edge of the banks again. You know, building debris, so on and so forth. It's pretty poor that we can't keep this town clean like we should, but we got pig pens all over the place and trash thrown all over the roads. You know, I think what we ought to do is get a hold of Mr. Blake and have him put up a gate there and I say, was, I, was just, I was just gonna mention that. That's what we ought to do, is put up, have Blake put up a gate and be done and over with and nobody can pack it. But I, I don't think he'd be interested in doing that. No. Just certain <clears throat> people like to cause issues in this town all the time. Well, let's just stick to it, Herb. Yeah, it's well, trying to. So back to my original question. We just heard the superintendent. He seemed to, He seems to be the one who did this. He seems to be the bully against the town residents of not doing things in this town. I want to know why we have the no packing on this road. Why? Did, and it's been fine before the bridge was done. It's fine after. So from what I heard, and it's from, still the right width. So what I heard from the superintendent was there is an issue down there. Um, What's the issue? He trash. just said it. Trash, people parking. There's litter. trash all over the sides of the roads. What are you gonna do? Shut everything down? I, I remember there used to be a chair down at the uh, old boat ramp that I called her about five years ago to get. I, I don't understand the mentality of people doing that, but we can't control that. Um, I think you're getting off issue, Mr. No, Chairman. I, I don't think so. We're talking about I trash, think and he's, he's talking about why he, why he did it. Uh, the parking, I haven't seen it been an issue. I've seen people park on Mill Street, mm -hmm. and that's being used. Well, I'm in the space there at the observation deck. I've never seen that many cars to block that road if they have to get down to the tracks. I, I think you the issue that you had was that there was not parking at the observation deck. There is parking there. Yes, maybe yeah, there's still, else. of course there's parking there, but it says no parking all on both sides. Further down? No, right, at, right, after the, right after the bench it starts. No, it's further down there. 375 feet or inches. Yeah, I, 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 it's right, Two right there, right, right there. there, right. So all the way down, and people go no, right up no, front. The no parking mm. starts here. That's what's in this picture. That that point there is 32 feet from this area of the roadway. Right. So, so there, what, there is room for two cars to park there. Right. You said there wasn't room to park. There's there's no parking signs in there. So pretty much what it, what the signs are saying is no pack down on this road. So no parking. That's pretty much what right it's saying. There. Yeah. Okay. So what you're saying is you're eliminating you're eliminating down to two cars now. That's correct. 
Why would you do that when we went to all that trouble to do that dedication, let the people go down there, watch the sunsets, the trains, whatever they want to do, and now you're not going to let two cars go down there. And I've never seen that road blocked enough so you can't get to the tracks. I mean, come on, and you ain't about trash. Let's, we're not, you're going to block this all down because someone's throwing a few, little bit of trash down there. I'll, That's I'll ridiculous. You, no, this I'll town, no, you, this town I'll is ridiculous. <coughs> this town is ridiculous when you were going to close a, a, a place we just built because it's, someone's throwing a little trash not, down there. It's not closed. It's not, and it's such a nice area down there, ah, too. You guys, you guys are unbelievable. Trash down oh, Dave, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. If, if this so I just pretty made, pretty made pretty, pretty clear. No, yeah. yeah keep from, your photos, too. From, I don't need those. From what? Every from time what? I come here to give you something, you water it down, and you turn it into something that it's not. David, do you want to have a civilized conversation? What's that? Do you want to have a civilized conversation? I'm having a civilized right now. So talk to me. So let's let's have some common sense into the conversation and then so, we'll keep it civil. So this this road is a private road. I'm by aware that, of that. By that definition, that's telling me my common sense dictates that nobody should be parking on it. First because it's private, yeah. and second because it's an access road for a fire lane. The law states you can't park within 10 feet from a fire lane. Well, who, who designated as a fire lane? As long as it's an open road if, to get down there. If, it's, if they're using it as a fire road, I don't know what it's defined as. You just said you're going to put a gate up. Which the fire department has access to with a key. Well, I think, I think first of all, it's, if it's private property, what business does the town... I'm, I'm with you there, and I, I, I okay. get you there. But I'm going to tell you through this conversation, I don't like the idea of people parking there. It blocks that gentleman's property. It blocks the access to that property. No, they're not, they're not blocking the roadway. They're parking to the sides, right where the signs are. I've never seen that road blocked right. off, ever. I haven't seen the signs. These pictures aren't even showing. I can see the signs on the boat ramp side, but I can't see them on the other side. Yeah, the best I could do, Steve, was here. That's, that's fire lane, and then here's no parking, no parking, and as you go down but, around the But corner. to answer your question, nobody gave the superintendent permission <clears> to do this? To be honest with you. All right, you, so where, where are you going to go with it from now? What are we going to do about it? I what, mean, what would, so I guess the question is, what would you like us to do? Oh, I don't know. I'm asking you. You guys are the executives. You always tell me that. You're the executive people of the town. And you're taking someone's private property and you're, you're, you're telling you're putting no packing on someone's private property. But yet you put a dedication thing down here for the townspeople. I think you have to separate the two. Uh, I don't think so. I think you do. No, it's your opinion. Because that, that, that bench wasn't meant to be used with a parking spot on an access road. That, that bench was meant for people that are walking down the new sidewalks, for the people that park over on Mill Street. You know, there's a lot of residents that walk, uh, for the people that congregate at, the, um, at White's Landing, things mm -hmm. like that. And especially for Mrs. Murray, too. Well, I mean, you can say that, but uh, I see cars packed in there all the time. So if you see cars parked there all the time, that becomes a bigger issue where we have to say you can't park there. And who's going to enforce that? You're going to tell some, now you, you told me it was private property. Now you're telling me you're going to enforce it? I think the best idea, if it becomes a huge issue, which I don't see it. It being shouldn't be a huge by, issue. By, if not, if, if everything was left the way it by, was, you shouldn't have to put the no pack in by there. By your own admission, it's, it's not a huge issue. It, it, I think the best solution is a gate. Uh, I, I don't. I don't see that. That's up to that's up to the homeowner. I 100% agree. I get a spot, and I, people turn off in one of my properties all the time. They're there all the time. People, they turn around there, and if the town came in and said, you know, you know we don't want people down there, I wouldn't let them do it. When you called me yesterday, I actually thought that they painted words on 148 itself as opposed to the road. Yeah. No, no. No, it's on the, the access. It's on the access road. I mean, there's never been a problem with that road ever. Now, all of a sudden, it's, it's a big to-do and no packing and, you know, we don't want you down there and the whole bit. You're going to pack your car over on Mill Street and hump around the corner and walk? Why should you have to do that when there's plenty of room in there? So how do we want to deal with it? I'd let the paint dry. And just not repaint it. Yeah. Do we want to paint over it? Do we want to sandblast it? Do we want to request a gate? Nope. There's two parking spots there. And there's defined yeah. parking spots there? Yeah. No. It, you can parallel park beside the observation. There, are, there is room for two cars, should people wish to park there. I, I don't want to see a designated parking spot down there. Then that, That's not our property then, to then determine. Let's just leave it alone. Yeah, just leave it alone then. Should we go out to Mr. Blake and ask him if he wants those signs there? You can. 
Yeah, maybe we should contact Mr. Blake then and see what he wants to do. Okay. So what I'm going to ask again is what gives the right for the highway superintendent to just go and do something on his own? Take the initiative. Yes, sir. I've been contacted several times in the past couple of months from this town manager and Sturge that CSX wants to do something down there. They're looking for a project. They want to start cleaning up along the tracks because it's just the possibility of putting the second track back. So if that's the case, they'll be in and out of that because that's the only entrance there until you get the inside of this report. So. How is that relevant with this discussion? Pardon? How is that relevant to this discussion? Well, they'd be going through there. I mean, whether it says no parking or not, that's their exit. That's their, their, uh, their exit. They're going to spend the access. The access. Million but we haven't even gotten to that point. It's all on paper. It's all out of school. Well, they, they haven't contacted the town of Brookfield. But my point is the road, I've never seen that road blocked with cars. Everybody's packed to the side where the no packing signs are. Dave, I... No, I'm just bringing it to your attention because a just, lot of people have approached me on it and yeah. I said I'd find out, so... I, I, I honestly don't think it's that egregious of an action for a highway superintendent to put signs there. It's for public safety. I it's not even, you just said it's private property, so what right does he have I, to put I, down I, on I, private property? I agree with that as well, but that's where I think now what we have to do after it's done is contact Mr. Blake and see what he'd like us to do. If you want something different. I mean, the highway says they're so busy, they don't have time to do anything, but they got time to go waste putting no packing down on a, on a road to nowhere. Right, so are you okay with us approaching Mr. Blake? You do whatever you want. I brought okay. it to your attention. Is that what we'd like to do? Yeah, I think we should call Mr. Blake. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to find with that. All right, so can um, Karen, you can have a discussion with Cindy if you'd like to reach out to him or if Cindy would like to reach out to him and have that conversation. Anything else? Uh, I may want to weigh in on number 10. Definitely have that right. Thank you, sir. Anybody else wish to address the board this evening? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. If I could just ask a question. Definitely. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Arizona campaign. So I, I just want to know... Is now a time for me to speak to this particular issue, number 10, or should I wait till number 10 comes up and then? Till number 10 comes up. Okay. That'd be is my. Is that going to be taken out of order by any and, uh, I might entertain that. Um, unless you wanted to say something as a private citizen, but if you're asking for my recommendation, I would meld it into one. I would rather, I would rather yeah. uh, address it number 10. Right, but number one is kind of more important to yes. me than number yeah, 10, number so. One. One, one so anybody anybody else wish to address the board this evening? I'd like to address the board very briefly. Welcome, ma'am. Um, is there any is there a way you can come on up? Get your pretty face on camera. <laughs> um, I just want to clarify. Um, and can you on just can you just let people know who you are? Sure. Oh, thanks. I'm Julie Nicole Boucher from the Ware River News. Um, on behalf of Charlie Publications, I just would like to clarify. We received a little bit of feedback with some confusion about an article that went to press last week about the numbers and the figures for the bridge repair. And I want to clarify that the numbers that were published and accurate re accurately reported did reflect the numbers for a temporary bridge. Um, it was clearly stated in the article. Mm -hmm. Those were not the numbers for a permanent bridge, so I just would like to go on record to make sure that that clarification is very clear to people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question. Still public access. Welcome, sir. Actually, my question will probably come up under number one, but I thought I'd ask it. I'm just curious, um, is there any plans to put lights on that bridge? That would be a master plan discussion. Okay. Well, then let me just briefly say it's, it's a nice bridge, but when you come down there at night, it's very dark, and I think it really needs two or three street lights. So I would ask you to think about bringing it up at a future town meeting. I really think it needs to be well lit. Thank you. There is a very, right on the corner, there's a street light down there that's bright. On Lower River? Oh, where are you talking? <coughs> He's not talking bridge. Frisio. He's I'm talking, talking about the bridge. When you, when you come down. Are you talking my neighborhood? Yeah. You're, you're talking no, I'm talking about the, bri the Murray Bridge. That's what I oh, thought. Oh, I thought The Murray Bridge. Oh, the the Murray bridge, bridge is what I'm talking about. about. Since you're just there, talking. Yeah, there is a street light yeah. on the top of Lower River, I believe. Yeah, right, but it yeah. should really be lit. There should be two or three street lamps, I mean, on that bridge. 
So that's, I don't know if it's going to come up in the bridge. Oh, it is well, not. You're talking about the other bridge. Yeah, okay. Bridge. Yeah, okay. Bridge. Thank you. We'll take it under advisement. Thank you, sir. Anybody else wish to address the board this evening? Item number one is bridge update. Um, I don't know if Cindy and Herb want to join us. We are at a point where we have all the numbers. We're looking, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, um, we're looking at a price tag of $240,000 to repair the bridge and a price tag of $18,000 to what? No? No, 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 no. I just, I just gave him a look because he sat there and oh. not up here. <laughs> Mama bird, get over here. Um, and a price tag of $18,000 for the temporary bridge repair. With these numbers in hand, I think it's, I, I think we're beholden to set a town meeting, special town so. meeting as soon as possible. And in between that town meeting, solidify numbers. But these are, I, th I think these are really solid working numbers and have a joint meeting with the advisory committee and have a discussion where we allocate this money from. So, just so, because I may have caused some confusion as well. Not you. Oh, I always do. Right. Uh, works out that when Herb and I were talking, uh, there are additional barriers, Jersey barrier type things, plus lighting and the like, that when I sent a note, um, to prep for this meeting, I used the number of forty-five. Yeah, I saw that. So, yeah, I saw that so, too. so I would only suggest, and again, I would defer to Herb and Cindy, but that we, for the special town meeting, we, I, I do use the word bad, but we, we use the I'm not to exceed number of something greater than the thirty-five. So as we work down, I would recommend that we have two articles. Okay. Yeah. Because we had we had a couple residents that live right there that said they don't want to see a lot of money spent on a temporary bridge. If we're talking fifty thousand dollars for a temporary bridge, I as a resident would be would not be supportive of that, especially with a price tag of a quarter of a million dollars to well, repair. If you don't do a temporary bridge, all right, and Quaybaugh Street floods, you got three hundred people that are landlocked. Can't get emergency vehicles in or out. But that's that's where we have the discussion. I, I like I would vote for an eighteen thousand dollar temporary bridge. I wouldn't vote for we're, fifty thousand. You know, you get, we're trying to we're making a lot of phone calls, emails, yeah. and, and everything and else to all different companies. You understand that this board is oh I, I agree one hundred percent. All right, I agree one hundred percent. You know, if the state wasn't involved with this, it probably would have been half fixed by now. Yeah. But that's besides the point. But at the same time, Herb, I think we're on record that if there is an issue, you go down there with a loader, you take those Jersey barriers out, and we go over that bridge. If there's a flooding to get residents in and out, we go, I, trust me, I, we, we, I do it in a heart. We, we go over, and, and we, as a board, yeah. have said yeah. we'll take responsibility. That's right, yeah. for emergency purposes only. But, there's no question about it. But, but get, getting back to the, just so we're clear, yeah. back to the 45, it actually was bid ready documents for the new bridge that go as a part of the proposal. So just, we can't be confused that we're, what we're asking for, when I said 45, it was to provide some latitude should it go over 35. In that 35, 19 was a part of ha having bid ready documents for the new bridge for the grant application. Are we I was assuming that that was part of the 240 because that ties into the Mass Works grant. That it's ahead of it. That's, that's what, again, the 35 that we talked about before is one piece is temporary bridge and the second piece is bid ready documents for the new bridge. Mm -hmm. So I just. But at, at the end of the day, before town meeting, we'll have a specific number, right. and I don't think I don't think they're going to be much different than what we just stated the right. two forty and the eighteen. But what yeah. we're talking about is eighteen thousand for a temporary bridge, yeah. and I would think that the town would look favorably. Oh, one hundred percent. I would yeah, support that all day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Would you like an update of where we stand as of I would today? love to have an update. As of today, we started the Mass Works grant application for the repairs to Dunbrook Bridge. Um, CMRPC is going to help us with that application. Deadline for the application submission is September 2nd. We don't have a lot of time. So with that being said, I'm going to move item number five ahead and entertain a motion to authorize the town of Brookfield to apply for the 2016 MassWorks grant application and to, re and to received said fundraising if awarded 
Also to authorize the chair of the board of selectmen to sign and execute any necessary documents related to the Mass Works grant program. I will make that motion. I'll second. With discussion, there is a letter in here of support uh, that Clarence had generated. Yeah, it's a draft. I would ask that Karen put this in the proper form. Okay. And mm -hmm. again, with this motion, it allows the chair to sign. So once I approve that, we'd we'll be good with that. So any further discussion on said motion? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Continue, ma'am. Collins Engineering is working with the Acro Bridge Company to design the footings and plans for the construction of a 60-foot single lane temporary bridge. Once completed, these plans must be approved by Mass DOT. When we have approved plans, Brookfield Highway will hire a tractor trailer truck and driver to pick up the bridge components from the Mass DOT depot. Brookfield Highway will then install the footings for the temporary bridge with oversight from Collins Engineers. Highway Department will install Jersey barriers for traffic routing. That's, we're still working on trying to get these Jersey barriers on loan from Mass DOT. Yeah, but they've been supportive yeah. from all the communication I've seen. Yes, they have. We just haven't gotten the they, final they yes, got go a, get them. Exactly. They haven't said, yeah, they're available, just let us know when, when you want to pick mm -hmm. them up. They haven't done that, so. Uh, installation of the single lane bridge and traffic signals with oversight from Collins Engineers and Acro Bridge Company will follow installation of the Jersey barriers. This step may require additional manpower. It may be helpful to have some extra people on hand to help put this bridge together. Um, the approaches to the bridge probably should be paved. Temporary bridge, Collins Engineers, it's $1,000 for coordination, $4,300 for construction plans. Estimated for pads, gravel, and asphalt, it's $10,000. Bridge component trucking, again estimated at $1,000. Miscellaneous parts, nuts, bolts, screws, um, another $1,000. Beaver removal to date has been $1,000. We need to keep the water down near that bridge, so we may have to have beaver removed again. Permanent bridge repairs. Again, Collins Engineers. Phase one is the preliminary contract document development. Um, that's 10,600. Field investigation site visit, that's 1,100. Phase two is the environmental permitting assistance, 3,200, and wetland delineation at $2,000. So phase one and two for Collins for the permanent bridge is $16,900. That's the piece the selectmen have already okayed. I spoke with Mike Sullivan at Collins. He has agreed to hold off on some of the other engineering costs until after the MassWorks grant. So we that, can- That's part of that figure though? No, that's phase three, which is final contract documents, which is 8,000 and response to contractors, RFI, well, shop I'm garments. talking the 240, that's part of That's correct, yeah, that's, that's correct. what it's part of. And the site visits. Um, so temporary bridge removal, we're estimating is gonna be cost about $2,000. The temporary bridge has to come out before we can do the repairs for the permanent bridge. Advertising for contractors, I'm estimating 500, hoping that's high. So, so time frame, temporary bridge can go in when? As soon as Mass DOT approves. okays the plans. Approximate time frame? No idea? No idea. Well, they didn't get the approval from the Board of Selectmen until Monday here, because we didn't know anything about it. They, um, we had hoped we could pick up the bridge components, and they said no, not until they approved the plans. I, I don't know so much about approving the plans. I think the money has to be approved at a special town meeting before we can move forward. Not if you go back to the idea that you'd use the 30000 of road reconstruction. And then just replace it. And then it. replace it at the town meeting. So what I just heard that scares me is that we have to take a, a, a bridge that we're going to pay twenty grand for, possibly fifty grand for, out during construction and the road's going to be closed again. Yes. But I think it's going to only be closer to 20000 not fifty. Yeah. How long is it going to take to repair? That we haven't heard yet. We haven't heard. How long does it take for the temporary to call up? We're kind of hoping that we can get it squared away in a week's time. And when, does the, when would the project be ready to go, dig ready? They won't say until probably spring anyways. Yeah. We're looking at a temporary bridge through the winter. For a year. Through the winter. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So it would, be, it, would, it would be advantageous for us because it's not going to be a quick turnaround. Oh, no, so no. To get that road open, it's it's worth the money. Yeah. Exactly. So are we going it, to have refinement? You said there was a problem. Maybe we're getting some stoplights. So we're, we're working on that. We've been, we tried to get them on loan. Okay. And I got a definite no on that today. So now I'll have to pursue yeah. probably renting or buying so them. Definitely, we will need them down. Yeah. It's a single lane? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're advocating that we put a temporary bridge up before we even have a special town meeting? Yes. I think we should put the temporary bridge up as soon as we get the okay from MassDOT to do it. And you're assuring us that it will only be at a cost of 18000 We are borrowing the bridge from MassDOT. Which don't cost us anything. Which isn't going to cost us. Our understanding is <clears throat> ACRO, which is the bridge company, company will provide us with an engineer to oversee the, the construction of the bridge, again at no cost. Can we take this out of Chapter 90? They haven't released the Chapter 90 yet. They, for, for the little bit of money that we have, Jersey Barriers, I'm guaranteed that it's not going to cost us anything to go get Jersey Barriers from MassDOT. It's just a matter of going down and getting them. There's a whole bunch of them right in the stir, which I think they changed nine. Right. But we just got to get them to say, yeah, as Jonathan Gulliver from MassDOT hasn't sent nothing back to us by email or anything, stating, yeah, they're available or whatever. But everybody that I've talked to in District 3 that is responsible for that area, they said there shouldn't be any problem whatsoever on those. So money for this road reconstruction? Uh, what's, what we're going to have to spend out is whatever the cost is for the concrete, but where are we getting? Are we going to take out, of, out of road reconstruction? We're going to have to take it out of road reconstruction. And what's in there now? Uh, roughly thirty-six. So um, we got some gravel that we're going to have to put down. Then we're going to have to pave it. So I'm. What Cindy just said here is about eight, about eighteen with mm -hmm. ballpark eighteen. That and we had the discussion Monday at about ten. So we've raised it by eight grand. When I saw your email yesterday, it scared, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. scared me yeah. tremendously. I wanted to be very clear yeah. that part of it's the new bridge. But right now, we're talking about 18000 for a temporary bridge. We have double that in road reconstruction. I, I, for the townspeople, I think it's advantageous for us to pull the trigger on this tonight. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to entertain a motion to allow the highway department to um, secure and place a temporary bridge as soon as possible with money to be transferred well to be allocated from road reconstruction and we're going to do it as economically as we right, there's no doubt yeah. Yeah. There's no yeah. doubt the, 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 the only know. thing that's that's not going to be reusable is the concrete in the asphalt but it is what it is it has right. to be done yeah, exactly it has to be done. and for that little bit of you know material you know we're, the gravel is going to go back to the highway department we're going to say that if for some reason or other we can use the concrete pads for something else. And if there's the turnaround Sorry. time is what they're saying, it's, it's we have to do it for the residents. Yeah. So I'll entertain said motion. I'll make yes. the motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, with that said, thank you very much yeah. for everything you guys are doing and still are going to do. Above and beyond. Appreciate it. So back to with that being said, if it's not going to be done until spring, do we want to wait longer to set a special town? Do we want to wait another two weeks for our next selectman's meeting? I think we ought to brainstorm what yeah. the data would be. Well, you have to, well, well you if, it's, six weeks, if right? it's going to be in the spring, I, I think we have as much time as we need. Well, I'm worried that we're going to take, we're going to rob the reconstruction fund of, the 30, of 18 and the 36. But there's, so there's nothing, there's, Herb, there's nothing planned with that 36 out of road reconstruction right now, is there? Just the repairs and stuff that I'm doing right now out there. But that, yeah, that'll right. last us at least a half a year, correct? Would you yeah, sure. Yeah, between so that and coal patch that we got to do before winter here and there, yes. Oh, oh. So, so then, we can go, we can get by then. I got November. nothing. I wouldn't shoot for November. I, maybe the earlier? maybe the end of September, beginning of October. So we I need I, a me yeah. meeting anyway, yeah. right? But we usually do it in November, correct? To clean things yeah, up. Yeah, we do usually do it in November, just before we set the tax rate. But I, I think that's too early, and we can always have two special town meetings. It is right. what it is. Mm -hmm. 
but I, I think it might be too early. I think we get more solid numbers. Uh, we're going to get a temporary bridge going as soon as yeah. possible with that so vote. You're saying, Wait for two weeks, see where we're at, and then set it. The, because I wanted to set it tonight because I thought we had to throw soon. that into a special town. But if it's going to be done before, we're good. Okay. I think we're ahead of the game. All right. So we'll discuss it. We'll wait for more information and probably set the special town in two weeks. Not for two weeks, but in two weeks we'll set it. Okay. All right, thanks again, guys. Can you guys provide a little bit of presentation exactly what the numbers are going to be for the temporary bridge? I know Andy said that you can do it as economically as possible. I'm a little bit confused. I just want to make sure that the reporting is accurate. Cindy has all the numbers. Yeah, if you want to see her. Um, while you're here, her part, I'm going to move wage authorizations up, number eight. There is a request for a seasonal employee at a rate of $15 an hour. I'm in the same boat, Herb, with, with this resume, this application. I'm in the same boat. It's, I don't think that individual is worth $15. Well, they, people in town are going to have to stop mowing the lawns because I don't have time to mow lawns three days a week with two guys. Town of West Brookfield just hired a guy to mow lawns over there in the cemetery at $19 an hour. God bless West Brookfield. Yeah. I, I, I'd be a little upset over that. You know, the reason why we lost this guy here, he, he got another job also. Watch, watch yourself. We both know why. He got another job also. He, he would have been fired if, if I was his boss not showing up for two or three days. And we, we both know, all, all four of us know, there were other issues there. Mm -hmm. So it has nothing to do with the 15. I'd make a motion to approve the wage authorization just to get it on the, on the table. Do I have a second? Is there any way we could meet somehow in the middle on that instead of... He, he said it. That's what he said. That or nothing. Oh, he's yeah. saying that or nothing. That's right. It, you're not going to... Nobody wants to do it. You know, right. when I, you go to McDonald's or Dunkin' Dawn's or whatever and get paid more than $12 an hour to sit there in an air-conditioned place and... I worked at I worked at Burger King for at 15 years of age, and uh, it it was a lot easier than it wasn't as easy as you're saying it was. A lot of our clerks don't even get 15 an hour. This is physical labor. I get it. I respect it. But we're talking about mowing lawns, guys. So do I have a second for discussion or? And with Herb saying that we're basically being held hostage, 15 or nothing, that doesn't sit well no, with me at all. Me well, then the lawns, they're not going to get mowed. They'll get mowed when they get mowed. They may look like hay fields or whatever, but they'll get mowed sometime. Have we reached out to the volunteer that was mowing the common? He, he stated that you wouldn't let him mow him anymore. He did. When we told him we were going to mow, he never showed up. Have you reached out to him again to vote? He's been around enough times. He's, he's told me he, if you... He showed up the other day, he says, when are you going to mow? I said, we just got done mowing him. That might be his way of asking if you want him to mow. But he don't want to mow everything. No, but we can take a common. If he's going to mow the for, common... For four hours? When you got two guys for two days? Come on, do the math, Steve. I'm doing the math. If we have a guy mowing the common for free, that's free. But Not that's only four hours worth of mowing with one guy. That's free. It, why aren't we taking what we can take? Especially when an individual's we can't get pe we can't get people to come and serve on committees. But we have a gentleman that mowed all last year that wants to mow it again, and we're not taking him up on it. He shows up when he wants to show up. They, you, you know. just said they're going to get mowed when they get mowed. If he right. shows up on a Friday versus a Tuesday, who cares when it gets mowed? Everybody knows where I'm at. He knows how to find me. He always knows how to find me when he wants something done down at the cemetery. So he knows how to find me. Are you opposed, Cindy, to reaching out to him and asking him if he can mow the common? Uh, we can, we can check. I'd, I'd appreciate that. But who's going to mow the rest of it, Steve? Well, we work on that as we work on it. This is the only individual that's applied? Nobody wants to work for the town of Brookfield, yeah, which I don't blame him. I, I do. I kind of like the town. Well, that's why I got another gentleman that's possibly looking at another job already. He gave me a heads up today. For what, so, for what reason? More money an hour. You know, 
You pay peanuts, you're going to get peanuts all the I, time. I don't think we're paying yeah. peanuts. Well, you are in some departments, you are, Steve. Well, you're referencing your department, I'm assuming. And I, I, I'd like to think we take care of our guys. No. And, and Unfortunately, we do not take care of the town employees. <laughs> that showed at that town meeting. That and, definitely is not true. And I, 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 I had the privilege of meeting the gentleman that was mowing down that last seasonal worker, and I, I thought he was a pretty good worker. Yes, and, he did. He helped out a lot. And and he, I, I he appreciate was, it very much. He, he, was, he was pleasant, and he, he really liked yeah. doing what he was doing. So... Well, I can't see somebody coming in and say, "I'll well, take the job only for $15. It's like they're wow. holding us hostage. So, Cindy, if you called this gentleman tomorrow and said that the Board of Selectmen approved him to start working immediately at 12 an hour, are you interested in that conversation? Not tomorrow. When, when you have the... So, what, are, you, are you okay with me entertaining the vote? So, I'll entertain a vote. Um, to approve wage authorization for fifteen dollars an hour for Mr. Driscoll, 15? if he's I'm twelve dollars an hour, um, if he so desires. I'll make the motion. I second. And he, if just, he comes back to the counter office. I know the counter office is going to be up ready. So what's that? Are we no? It, then that's not no. a counter. That's a statement. Right. But moving forward, I think it's in the best interest of the town not to pay a ransom of $15 an hour. Entertain, we have the motion. Any further discussion? Yeah. Can I get the yeah, personnel board? Definitely. As a citizen, whoever you want. Uh, no, from the personnel board. All right. The last seasonal worker, the, the last applications you had were for $12 an hour for a recent high school graduate. No, he actually wanted 15 an hour. All right, but we, it was approved at 12 you approved it at 15, we approved right. it at 12. Okay. This applic applicant has small engine repair experience. We are looking for help while we construct this temporary bridge. I think this person will be doing more than mowing lawns. That was the thought at the personnel committee. He is experienced. We have a need for more than lawn mowing and it's worth the $15. My, my personal opinion, I respect his ability to repair small engines, but when we talk about a garage, he's not a diesel mechanic. That's where we'd really need someone, not to put a lawnmower back together, especially when they're new. Okay. We, we have major, we, we applaud our highway department every single town meeting, especially last year and even into this year. They reconstructed Weber Road. They reconstructed, was it Martin Street, Mill Street, Upper River, with a three-man crew. I think I have full confidence in Herb and his men that he can put a bridge together with three guys. Okay. I'm just giving you the reasoning from the personal committee. Yeah, I respect that. Speaking of long, new lawnmowers, the one from the Louisville, we've repaired it four times this year already. So it's not that new, and the last person that maintained it didn't do a very good job. Well, I'm talking about the one you have down at the highway department from the Grand. We're using them all. I know. I, I was there for 50 hours putting the Shed together. It's kind of tough the two guys that are on the ground and the guy that's in the machine. It's going to be a really uh, ask. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion to approve wage authorization for the town accountant for $20 an hour. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. I, a department supervisor would actually be myself. Entertain a motion to approve the wage authorization for Ms. Chisholm for seventeen forty one. What's that? Yes. Yes. Question. Yes, sir. What's that pertaining to? Administrative assistant for the police department. Is that something? It's a wage, wage, all the police departments didn't get a wage authorization when we did them, so we have to approve the police department this evening. That's fine. Yeah. So do um, I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion for Mr. Dugan at the rate of 1379. I'll we, make the so this is my point. We, we have a part-time patrol officer that's putting his life on the line goes out every single day, kisses his family goodbye, and gets shot in the head for the town of Brookfield 
We're paying him $13.79 and we want to pay a guy $15 an hour to mow a lawn? Am I the only one that's seeing this? I know the Brookfield Police Department is seeing it. Entertain a motion for $13.79. I'll make a motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Entertain a motion to approve a wager. I'm going to cry. Wage authorization for Mr. Kimby for 1407. I'm sorry. Uh, current new 1449. So what's the new what's the new number on that? I read the wrong side. Is it? It's 1379. So I'll just if I can just make a friendly note that the last one was 1370 oh it is the same it's price he didn't go up he's no okay thank you so not, i'm sorry i just wrote on you nope. so we don't have to mend anything nope. so we didn't make this motion yet so we're good here uh, entertain that motion for 1449 i'll make the motion Sorry. any discussion hearing none all in favor aye. Aye. aye entertain a motion for mr dodge for the amount of 1379 i'll make the motion do a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion to approve Miss Allen for 1379. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion for Mr. Jobs for 1379. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Aye. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion for Mr. Pianca, rate of 1379. I'll make the motion. Any Sorry. discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion for the water department for Mr. Herbert for a second operator at the rate of 3007. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. $30.07, and we're not taking care of our guys. Hearing any no, no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion for Ms. Chisholm for the rate of 1785 for the administrative assistant to the water department. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion for the water department for Mr. Crevier, uh, second operator, 2005. I'll make the motion. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion for Ms. Perdue, uh, for the animal control officer, for annual salary of 5,812. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion for... These are the... Why do we have Except a... for the assistant and for the regular? No, they're both Ms. They're Perdue. They're both for Sarah. Right. Is one for One's the assistant, the assistant. One for the regular? She can't both. be both. Except, no, but what happened is we needed to do both because it was never, there was never a... Um, oh, this is 2016. All right, so this is for 2016 for Ms. Perdue for $5,643 annual salary. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. There's not a name here, Karen, for the assistant. Aye. People. Yeah, this, this is the one for Sarah. No, it Did says. Did you already sign one for Sarah? Yeah, but that says assist, assistant. That says assistant on it. Right. Though. There's one for assistant for Sarah, and there's one for regular animal control officer for Sarah. She can't be both. No, she's not. But she was the assistant animal we control We took a vote officer, on that. We can sign. And there was that. never a wage adjustment. Is that for 2016? It's 2016. Okay, so for 2016, assistant. So she did both. She she was. She was, she was and assistant. Then when, she resigned. I mean, we had to switch resigned, over okay. for the amount of six hundred thirty-four dollars. Yep, that makes sense. Saint said motion. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's give that snack back once we're done. Mm
All right, we will shall now take item number 10 out of order, political signs, complaints. Uh, there was an email generated by Mr. Snyder in regards to this, yep. asking to place it on the agenda. The floor is yours, sir. So two telephone calls complaining about large uh, signs are being placed throughout the town. There are at least three. Uh, in referring to the current uh, sign bylaw, the political signs are accepted. The uh, uh, item C, item one, general sign regulation suggests that the sign can't be larger than 16 square feet. And so with that, I would like to refer that to the zoning board, uh, zoning enforcement officer for an action to remove the signs. So, Dave, can, can we just control ourselves, Dave, please? Karen, I don't. I don't oh, and I, I, I probably ought to we're say not this. Discuss uh, that this evening. Just so we're all clear, and we can put some levity into this evening, uh, I registered as a Republican uh, in uh, 1969. So, just so we're all clear. Okay. So I, I did receive two telephone calls. I, I, I understand and appreciate the town residents' concerns. And uh, I said that I would bring it forward to make sure that we can act appropriately. Okay. So I'm taken aback and almost breathless that you're a registered Republican? Yeah. God bless you. Since yeah. 1969, just God so bless you. Clear. I didn't um, realize that. I didn't either. I thought in your, in your Meet the Candidates night you said you were an independent, but. Nope, Republican. God yeah. bless you. Yep. Um, with that said, I agree with you. It has absolutely nothing to do with this conversation. Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Clancy is dead on that we can wear our party affiliations anywhere we'd like to wear them as residents in this town. As elected officials, we're not running under a party affiliation. We're not here to preach to a party affiliation or a candidate. We're here to represent the town the residents of this town. I think we do it admirably. Um, in regards to signs, I think what I read in your email and what you just read, words mean something and it says recommendation. We have no bylaw that prohibits the placement of those signs. I, well, in reading this, it says political signs are okay. Mm -hmm. But what it says also is that this particular, in, in this particular thing where it says public, charitable, or religious, it's saying 16 square feet in area. Is that Early. a town bylaw or is that? That's a zoning bylaw. That's a zoning bylaw. Zoning yeah. bylaw. So where does that say that? Right there. Mr. The Mr. Chairman, I have to be. One second. Right here. Signs announcement to the board's office from the area allowing districts in connection with public, charitable, or religious uses. I, I think the, the use of the word public versus political. I don't see anything in there in political signage. Well, okay. I, I know the town of Spencer yeah. and their bylaws has a specific has specific wording in their bylaws that you can't place political signs out X amount number of days before elections and they're very stringent on that. Mm -hmm. I know the state doesn't allow you to place political signs. They, they literally come and take them and we talk about the Sturbridge barn. They put them behind the barn for you to come and get them. They don't throw them away. I don't think the town has a bylaw. I, I don't see that bylaw as addressing political signs. I think anybody that supports a candidate in any way has the right and the ability to voice that opinion with a with a lawn on this with a sign on their lawn. That that's my take. Beyond sixteen yeah. foot square feet. And, and we do have the chairman of the planning board available. Mm -hmm. She, I'm, I'm assuming that she's going to argue in your defense. Oh, I didn't and, and, and against mine. <laughs> Actually, anybody should assume anything until I speak. May I speak? Not right now. Not right now, ma'am. Linda, what's your take? Well, if the way I feel, if it says right here, 16 square feet. But word, but words mean something. It goes into the definition. Public. Mm-hmm. Okay. To Charles me, pu public is is you know a yard sale. It. it it doesn't say. It doesn't say political. Political is very specific. Well, we we, we pay does. we pay attorneys a lot oh, of money. Yeah, okay. We pay attorneys a lot of money to give opinions on words, and there's interpretations on both sides, and that's where lawsuits occur, and that's where the arguments in court happen. Is interpretations of words. Mr. Chairman, can I? Not right, not right now, please. 
So this is where it was. Political words. I gotta find it. Oh, down here you meant. Yeah, yeah temporary sentence. There, I gotta find it now. Right here. Political. There it is. Okay, temporary signs yep, temporary to a political. Sign. Yes, and so I'm interpreting this to go back to the other paragraph. Temporary it's a temporary sign, sign that has. To only if conforming to the requirements of permanent signs, except for signs related to service. I'm not a lawyer, by the way. No, no, nor I. But we both know what words mean. Um, We're pretty Mr. educated. Chairman, I'm chairman of the planning board. Can I speak to this issue which directly involves planning board? Not right now, ma'am. Why not? Because I don't want you to speak right now. I can address this directly I, I would, confusion. Ma'am, I, I will listen, but I just want to get a grasp of this right now between the three of us. May I speak after you're One hundred percent. I'm not going to okay. shut you down. That's not my intent. I just want to put my mind around this right now. You don't have to look at me like that. But like that. Like that. You can come around the camera and look at the camera like that and see if... When, when I see fit, ma'am, so we can go over this over and over. The longer that you take for me to interpret this, the longer it's going to take for you to sit in that seat. Ma'am, please. Okay. Thank you. Point taken. Temporary signs. Yeah, I, I'm interpreting temporary yeah. signs to be that public from... The earlier page. So there's general sign, it's under section C, general sign regulations. Yeah, get down to temporary. Advertising, donation, incorporate motion. Billboards are prohibited. So that gets into specifics of general yeah. signs. Yeah. Political signs, I don't think it are general signs. So I don't think we fall into this at all. Well, I'm interpreting but by we get, temporary. But we, we get into temporary. A political sign is temporary. And you said the word political is in there. So it speaks yeah. to it. And that's why it to Tem it. Temporary signs. This is section 10 sign regulation section e temporary signs temporary signs are allowed only if conforming to the regulations for permanent signs except for signs relating to sale rental or construction on the premise to a political religious or charitable camp charitable campaign or event or signs for new businesses whose permanent signs are not completed that, that just right there exempts political signs Mm -hmm. Such signs shall be removed within 15 days of the completion of the activity to which they relate. Temporary signs are allowed only if conforming to the requirements of permanent signs. So I'm going to use the example of Exit Realty. It's a gratuitous plug. I don't work for them. We're a great company. Yep. Came before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Petitioned because they weren't in zoning for that sign and it's up now. It looks beautiful. Bunk did a great job. Um, they had their temporary sign up there over her old one. Mm -hmm. Meeting this, well, it didn't meet the bylaw. They got the Zoning Board of Appeal, got it approved, put up that permanent sign. That's, in my opinion, where that falls into. Except for signs relating to sale, rental, or construction. So if Michelle wanted to go and put an exit reality sign at a house that she just listed, that exempts that, so she doesn't have to fall into that. If I want to rent my house that I'm building in Brookfield, put that sign up, that's what that means, it exempts that, or construction on the premises to a political, religious, or charitable campaign or event, those are all exempt. This is very, this is very specific. And I'm, I'm interpreting because of what it's saying there and defining those three categories. When I jump back to the earlier page, yes, it uses the word public, but I am interpreting the, the individual. These, these are sign regulations for permanent signs. This, you can't even get into this. This, this has nothing to do. Temporary, this was well written. Tempor this addresses our exact issue, temporary signs. For a real estate sign that someone puts up for a listing of the house, for a political sign, such as the one we're talking about tonight, for you as a charitable organization or religious organization having a summer camp or whatnot, it addresses all of those in this. Such signs shall be removed within 15 days of the completion. So that, that last sentence goes back to the temporary signs prior to the permanent signs. So Michelle had to take that down 15 days before the permanent. So 
But that sentence excludes exactly what we're talking about to a political. But these won't be taken down within 15 days. But I'm saying the, the 15 up. days has, does not refer at all no, see, yeah. to the political. These, this, this 15 days refers to the temporary sign, and I keep using Michelle, and if, if you hate me for it, Michelle, I'm sorry, but I think it's a great example. Yeah. By this bylaw, and she was exempt from it altogether yeah. because of the ZBA opinion, if she was going to put up that temporary sign, she would have had to remove that sign within 15 days. That's a business sign that's going to turn into a permanent sign. That's what they're talking about in the 15 days. It, it, it clearly states in here that political, religious, charitable campaign or event or signs for a new business are exempt. What I, I'm saying is that it lumps three categories. In this page, it talks of political charitable, religious, mm -hmm. and the like. When you go back to the earlier page, it uses the word public. And but so what's, be, what's being interpreted by others is that that paragraph that talks about the 16 square feet mm -hmm. is believed to be a public notice, political in nature, but public notice, and that the folks are saying that the signs are too large based on that paragraph. This, this paragraph has nothing to do with the temporary political signs. This, this is meant for, that there's nothing in here that says temporary. This right here is for permanent signs and regulations. This right here specifically talks to a temporary sign, i.e. political signs. This is well written. Mm, okay. I really don't want to waste money on a town council opinion because oh, I, I, don't either. I, I know Michelle well enough to agree with me. I would defer to experts in the room. Do you have anything to add? No, I, I think I, I'm interpreting it, I think, similar way to how Clarence is interpreting it. So you disagree with me? I do on this. All due respect. <laughs> no, I, I respect yeah. the opinion. Yeah. I, I disagree 100%. Does, does you know in my sitting on this in this seat, I say I'm on the fence a lot, and I look at both yeah. sides. That's literally black and white. And, and, huh? And, and I, with two to one, I would entertain a motion to, to um, contact town council for an opinion. Oh, uh, before we spend a nickel. No, <laughs> I, I know. Let Sharon talk. Oh, 100 percent. But is that where we want to go? Ms. Oh, Mahoney's I, I, not, no, 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 no. not going to clear this up. No, I appreciate no, her opinion. No. With all due respect, sir, you don't know what I'm going to say. I say it. 100, well, ha, ha, you're welcome, ma'am. Come on up. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a copy of this? That would be helpful. Thank you. Yep. Sharon Mahoney, Chair of the Planning Board. Planning Board has the responsibility to interpret zoning bylaws and to make recommendations about action. That, deter that responsibility is not reserved for the Board of Selectmen. When Ms. The Exit Real Realty, I can't remember her last name, when Michelle came before us about her sign, we pointed out that it did not meet the zoning bylaw criteria for size. We then, based on our interpretation of the zoning bylaws, referred her to the Zoning Board of Appeals. This entire discussion has been beside the point because this matter should have been brought to the, to the planning board for discussion, not this body, regardless of the outcome. And so you folks can interpret the zoning bylaws any way you want, but it is a matter for the planning board to decide. And that is the point I was trying to make before I was refused the right to talk about this 15 minutes ago. Questions? I don't have a question, I have a statement. A member of this Board of Selectmen brought it to this board for discussion this evening. We entertain that discussion. The Planning Board does not supersede this board to have a discussion in regards to this matter that two citizens brought to a Board of Selectmen. I'm not, I'm not casting aspersions on your right to have a discussion. I, think I am, I would like to finish my sentence, please. You did with a period. I would like and to with, finish my sentence, and with please. That, you did I would like to finish my sentence, you Mr. Did. Chair. And with that, Mr. Chair, I did not finish my sentence. With my that, statement is going to, I would like that. to finish my sentence. If you would let me speak, then I, you can speak. This is a conversation. I am this is a conversation. 
You did cast aspersion on our discussion in regards to this matter. I did not, sir. 100% did. I did not, sir. Okay, continue. I am making a statement that happens to be factual. Continue. You, I am not casting aspersions on your right to have a discussion. What I am saying is that the task of interpreting bylaws, which is what you were also doing, is the province of the planning board. Which you have every right to do. You, can you bring, are you can, interpreting you, you are interpreting the zoning bylaws and basing a decision on that interpretation. You didn't make any decision. You are about to. You called for a vote. You asked if they were in favor. That is a decision, is it not? It's a vote to ask town council on their opinion. That and is this, still a decision, this, is it not? This board has the right to ask town council for opinion based on residents' requests. And what I am if saying like is to, that this matter like to bring the issue should have up, been referred by you to the planning board. That's up to Clarence. As you saw, I put it on the agenda and I gave the floor to Mr. Snyder. Well, I'm looking for direction. Yeah. If you'd like Wait. to, if you'd like to have the discussion, you are the chair. You can place it on your agenda and have the discussion. We were requested to have this discussion, and that's what we're doing this evening. I would also say that there are others in the room, because I asked a question, I believe that there is other information in the room that should be brought forward, and so that we can have a clear understanding of what we should be doing. And who would you like to speak? I, it, Mr. Guildmeister or Mr. Cook had a document that may be worth value. Has Mr. Value. Chairman, I'm a, I'm, a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a member of Mr. Earhart's campaign, uh, so and his attorney is here. Uh, so, I, I, if with permission, we'd love to address the love, board of selectmen. Love, love to have both both of you come on up. Welcome, gentlemen. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome, sir. If you both could introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Bill Gilmeister. Uh, I am a citizen of the town of Brookfield, school committee member. Uh, I am also uh, a paid uh, uh, manager of Mr. Earhart's campaign. And this is uh, Gary Brigman. Uh, Bridgman. Bridgman, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. I'm uh, uh, attorney for the Earhart campaign. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, I guess I just want to kind of step back a, a bit here and, and say, uh, firstly, uh, the campaign does not wish to tussle uh, about the signs. Uh, I just want to make that very clear. That's not really, we don't want to get into a big fight about these. Uh, however, <clears throat> um, the campaign does believe that this is a First Amendment free speech issue. Uh, that I think the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board and the Town of Brookfield do need to think about uh, before they go too far down the road in asking for the signs to be removed. Um, and so I just want to make sure right up front uh, that that's where we are. We don't want to tussle, but we are going to defend our First Amendment right of, of, of political speech. Um, I, would, I would suggest that perhaps uh, uh, the zoning bylaws may be a little bit out of date, uh, particularly as it, as it applies to this, particularly since uh, the U.S. Supreme Court, but a year ago, uh, addressed this very question about uh, discrimination on different categories of speech, commercial, religious, political, and any other kind of category you want to identify, similar to those categories that are actually in our bylaws and that you can't put the kinds of restrictions, the size restrictions, uh, on different categories of political speech. And I'm sure that uh, Attorney Bridgman is going to speak to this matter as well, but that's the way that I understand that Supreme Court decision, the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, but a year ago. Uh, our bylaws are, this particular bylaw, I think, uh, around, you know, Is it the subsection same bylaw, temp, C. Temp, 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 to me, C Section C, uh, I, Section C uh, Mr. doesn't... Mr. Chairman, if I could just complete yeah, I, out, and then I, wanna, I, I understand. I want to have a working knowledge. Are you so you're referring to C as opposed to E? I am referring to, C I'm referring to the whole bylaw, actually. Right. Uh, your interpretation, however, of, of the temporary signs, uh, when I read it the first time, I had, I, 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 I questioned, okay, so what is this except for signs relating to sale, rental, or construction of premises to a political, religious, or charitable campaign or event? That would seem to me that they're exempt 
from this entire bylaw uh, because it's it's an exception and it's a listed exception and in fact it's a listed exception associated with those that the U.S. Supreme Court and I believe Massachusetts state law uh, have identified which means that uh, there aren't uh, any size restrictions on these uh, I think there's reasonableness and, and, and safety issues that would come into play that could easily be applied uh, to signs as, and an argument could be made that you can't put it in the middle of the road, you know, you can't block an intersection and those sorts of things. Uh, but my knowledge of the signs are none of those circumstances. Uh, I would also, the other thing, so, you know, to a certain degree, I think some of our bylaws are actually a little bit out of order, but I do believe that the temporary, uh, the temporary section, subsection E here, uh, does actually take care of this circumstance that we find ourselves in. Uh, and so I just wanted to make sure that the, that the board was aware of the U.S. Supreme Court decision and that, and that, we, and that we are willing to defend our rights as Attorney uh, Bridgman is here. Uh, to sort of listen in on the conversation and perhaps give some feedback to you uh, as well. Uh, but uh, so we wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, Route 9, uh, if I understand it correctly, is actually zone business A. And we have an awful lot of signs that are, f that are 32, 35 square foot signs along Route 9. And there's nothing, it seems to me, even in the bylaw as it's written, uh, that would prohibit uh, someone from putting up that size sign simply because they're in a district that is actually zoned as such. Uh, so I wanted to point uh, those things out. The timing of election really is not relevant here because we don't really say anything aside from the 15 days after, but even then the temporary sign, as you point out, Mr. Chairman, uh, would be, ex the political signs would be exempt. Uh, I think most people and candidates are more than happy to get their signs down. I know that when I run for office, I get them down the next day as quickly as I can because that, I know that, that, that night. you know, it's, yeah, and at night or in the morning, whenever, you know. So, um, so having said all that, uh, I guess the final point that I would make as a, as a citizen of Brookfield and a taxpayer, uh, knowing that uh, this would likely engage attorneys and town council, uh, which would cost us some money uh, on something that I don't think is, is, is relevant, as we've already pointed out about the temporary bylaws, the U.S. Supreme Court decision of June of, 19, of 2015. I just don't think that the money uh, being spent on it on, on this is really uh, is really worth it, uh, and so I would just recommend that uh, that perhaps the uh, the selectmen take take no particular take no particular action on this on this issue. That's all I have to say. I don't know if, if uh, so. Before the attorney speaks, and I'm not meaning to cut you off. My my method of operation, my mo, is I like to speak my mind because I'll, I'll lose it, and it's not meant to be offensive. So you don't know me. I think people in this room do know me. When Ms. Mahoney sits up here and says that it's a planning board's purview to discuss this, they can discuss it all they'd like. This is the Board of Selectmen, and, and, and I'm just thinking out loud now. They, as a board, cannot do anything. They can have the discussion. They can make recommendations. Mr. Snyder is correct when he wanted to refer, uh, refer to the Zoning Enforcement Officer. The Board of Selectmen are in charge of the Zoning Enforcement Officer. We would be the board that would request that action. So I, in hindsight, in thinking through this, I think this is a good discussion for the Board of Selectmen. The only reason why they asked for a town council's opinion is because I got outvoted, not with an official vote, but with a straw poll, that they disagreed with my opinion on the temporary bylaw. So with that said, the floor is yours, sir. Well, well pardon me just for a second. What we have is a sit well, two citizens interpreting the earlier page, the one with the 16 square feet, that it, it is a public announcement. So I mean, that's just so, I want, want to preface that in my understanding of the question that was posed to me, that it was a public sign and 16 square feet. So just 
Just one comment about one comment about that, particularly looking at uh, at the temporary signage uh, section. Uh, I mean, it would it would seem to me that a political. I mean, th this is written with words, and words have meaning. A public announcement, particularly associated with uh, some of the other things that are in there, I can't I can't find them right now. What are they? Um, okay, so public, charitable, or religious uses. It's not clear to me what those are. Public is not the same thing as not political. So, I, just telling you how the person I, 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 and, and, and to be honest with you, I would read public and I would think, well, quite possibly you could kind of throw you, that in there. You but, would, but when there's a subsection labeled specifically temporary signs I, and within that verbiage, yeah. there's literally, with exception to political signs, it doesn't get any more black and white than that. I kind of look at this as an educational exercise because, 100%. you know, I, I, last time I looked at the, zone, the sign zoning bylaw was when I worked for the state and that was probably, you know, five or six, seven years ago. Uh, and so, and then actually reading the fine print of this thing, uh, you start thinking about things a little bit differently. Uh, and I've come to the conclusion, I think as the chairman has, uh, that I don't believe these signs are, I don't believe these signs are regulated by our zoning bylaw. And I would, I would also say that I think our zoning bylaw is actually a little out of date and it ought to be reviewed and look toward uh, the U.S. Supreme Court decision uh, back in uh, a year ago uh, to see if we can bring it up to, up to date. Mr. Uh, well, just, just as a matter of reintroduction or introduction, my name is Gary Bridgman. I'm a lawyer for the campaign. And um, in general, I'm 99% in agreement with the chairman's opinions with respect to this statute. But specifically, it seems like the concern lies in C number one. And I don't want to go too far in the weeds with discussing subsections and lots of lawyer talk here. So I'll just read the section. It says, signs, announcements, bulletin boards not exceeding 16 feet are allowed in zoning districts in connection with public, charitable, or religious uses. Now, the Supreme Court and the, and the Supreme Judicial Court have a problem with that. And the problem is this. Let's put up a religious sign, it can be 16 feet. Let's put up a charitable sign, it can be 16 feet and no more. Let's put up a public sign announcing a party of some, something on the common, and it can be 16 feet. Let's put up a sign advertising Joe's store. Well, that's a private sign. No, wait, yeah, oh, that can't be 16 feet. Now, that is discrimination of speech based upon the size of the sign. And the Supreme Court says you can't do that. You can regulate public health, safety, and general welfare by regulating signs that obstruct traffic visibility, pose a danger of disrepair, threat of collapse, or disrupt the aesthetics. But you can't govern speech. And that's the problem with that bylaw. Now, I look past that bylaw because I look at the temporary, and the temporary takes care of everything because it says they are allowed for sale, rental, construction on the premises, political, religious, charitable. It seems like a blanket allowance for temporary signs. With, with, the, with the proviso that they must be taken down within 15 days of the termination of the particular event. But see, I, I disagree. You know, back to section C, that's permanent signs. C is permanent signs, yes. Section E, temporary signs, that last sentence goes back to the first sentence of the temporary signs that they're using before they put up a permanent sign. Because that, that first sentence references a temporary sign prior to the permanent sign. Quite, quite and possibly. Then it, and then it comes back and they're only putting that caveat in there for political, religious, and whatnot, temporary signs, and then they're coming back and explaining that that temporary sign for the permanent sign has to be removed within 15 days. Yeah, and, and quite possibly that's the case because it does say such signs, and it's hard to figure out what that's referencing, but regardless, if Mr. Earhart, put, uh, Mr. Earhart puts up a sign that's temporary and never becomes permanent, It'll be taken down within 15 days of the event. It'll be taken down immediately following the election. I, I, so, I, I just so, I look it, past that because I don't think it has any relevance it, to this discussion. And I, and I don't disagree. But, but my point is there's a problem with the point you brought up in saying it has to be 16 square feet. These are 32 square feet. There's a, that's wrong. Well, that is an unconstitu unconstitutional ordinance in my opinion and, and should be revised to reflect the fact that all signs, if it's a safety issue, should be no greater than 16 feet, or whatever it is the decision of the body. But that sign 
this ordinance is an in, uh, unconstitutional ordinance. So we've done, we've done substantial work with respect to these signs. We've looked at the zoning bylaws. We think they do uh, comport with the zoning bylaws within the town of, of uh, Brookfield. And we're appreciative to the, uh, to the private residents who've allowed these signs to be placed uh, in public view in support of our candidate. And that's where it's at. It's, it's, it's people that die for this country that allow people to put up their beliefs on their lawn in a temporary political way. Because you don't believe and agree with that campaign or that individual, you put up the opponent's sign on your lawn. That's what makes us a great constitutional we've republic. We've been joined. We've been joined. So, again, I disagree that this board does not have the right to seek town council opinion. I'd ask that we don't. If we, it does come to a vote, I will vote against it. But as a board, this is collective. Oh, I think we learned a lot tonight. Yeah, we learned a lot. Learned a lesson tonight. So we're backing off? Well, I have to respond to two people that called. <laughs> and I have a little more information than I had an hour ago. Re respectfully, we'd, we'd like to know who the people who, who complained are. And, and it's not, we'd like to just respond to them and directly and, and tell them our point of view. I'm assuming that's going to be a private conversation mm -hmm. after the meeting. It'll yeah. be fine. I, I don't have knowledge of who it was. This is, was again, this was Mr. Oh, Snyder's. Yeah. Right, thank you, thank, gentlemen. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Item number two, yeah. resignations. Yeah. I will entertain a motion to accept with regret and sending a letter of appreciation to Mr. LaRocca for uh, his resignation on the Brookfield Conservation Commission. I'll make that motion. I'm sorry. Any discussion? It's, 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 a, it's a sad loss. Yeah. yeah, that was part of the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 And with also deep regret, we have to accept a resignation from Mr. Griffin. Uh, from the Brookfield Veterans Service Officer for uh, with a letter of regret as well. Do I have said announcement? I'll make that motion. Second. Announcement. I'm looking at the agenda. Do we have, uh, we had that motion with the first, second, any discussion? Yeah. 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 Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Item number three, appointments. Um, quick to the draw, Mr. Lapine has volunteered from the town of West Brookfield to serve as our veterans agent. So I'll entertain a motion to appoint Mr. Lapine uh, to expire June 30th, 2019. I'll make that motion. Sir. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 But um, he should come in though and see. Mike. No, he should come and see the treasurer too and get a quarry check done. Yeah. Okay. Well, let him know that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is Mr. Snyder's doing or our constant, Both. our constant begging for uh, volunteers. But uh, thank you, Ms. Leduc. I will entertain a motion to appoint to a term uh, to the Historical Commission for a term to expire June 30th, 2019. Do a motion. Oh. Who is the person? Dinah Leduc. Okay. I'll make that motion. Sure. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 I will say my citizen article for the month is stepping up. Do it in a respectful manner. Item number four, QQLA, request for support. I completely admire this organization and this gentleman yes. that's uh, fighting an uphill uh, watching my words. Mm -hmm. Battle. Mm -hmm. um, God bless you. Um, he, again, every year they're asking for our support and every year we're giving it to them. Uh, I will entertain a motion to allow the Board of Selectmen to send a letter of support to the Mass DEP office in regards to the Spencer. Yeah. Well, Mass DEP, US EPA Region 1, and Mass DEP Central Region Office in Worcester. Entertain said motion. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. If I may. It's not the board, it's 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 the 
chairman of the board of selectmen and then other entities will have to take a vote in their capacity. Yes, sir. Could you explain a little bit what you, in detail, a bit what you're I'll, I'll read the letter. I believe it's the same exact letter, just to different people. Thank you. Uh, this one's the Mass DEP Office, 1 Winter Street, Boston, Mass. The Board of Selectmen of the Town of Brookfield understands that the National Pollution Discharge Permit, also known as NPDES, for the Spencer Water Treatment wa Wastewater Treatment Plant, also known as SWWTP, is being reviewed by the U.S. EPA and the Mass DEP, and these two agencies will jointly issue a new NPDES five-year operation permit. Brookfield is downstream from the treatment system and we are concerned about the impact of plant operations on our people, property values, and the environment. We encourage both the U.S. EPA and the Mass DEP to include measures necessary to ensure compliance with the requirements of the Clean Water Act of 1972 to protect our waterways, wetlands, and environment. The Brookfield Board of Selectmen forward this letter to you to express our concerns and to request that the new permit include operational perimeters, discharge limits, and plant upgrades necessary so as to protect the towns, people, property, rivers, lakes, and the streams, down, the streams downstream from adverse environmental impact from the plant operations. Very well written, very respectable, and I commend, I commend the group. Does that answer your question? More or less, yeah. I, can, I wrote the letter so I can give you a No, I'm just trying to, I mean, I know what's going on behind the scenes, but just so that people know about what, what they're doing the, up little, not too late, this pretty much. The treatment plan. Uh, Do you want to come up to the mic? Sure. Thank you, sir. And I appreciate the support that the selectmen and the uh, conservation have always given us in, in regard to protection of the lakes, uh, concerns about the water and the watershed. Uh, the Spencer treatment plant uh, comes up for a renewal of their operating permit, uh, the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System permit, every five years. Uh, their permit expired three years ago. So the, this permit has been extended until the US EPA issues them a new permit. Um, the treatment plant receives, it's a 1.08 million gallon a day treatment plant. If they receive a million gallons a day, they're discharging out their pipe less than 40% of that. So. 60% of the water is lost somewhere within the system. When they, re when they make out their monthly report to the US EPA and DEP, they only have to report what is coming out their pipe. So they're only reporting 40% of what is being discharged to the groundwater or to surface water. That's our primary concern, is what is not being accounted for. And phosphorus is one of the issues that creates uh, plant growth, in particular evasive plants all the way down the Seven Mile River, North Pond, South Pond, and Quaybog. Um, and so we would like the agencies, EPA and DEP, to, re to understand that this lost water needs to be accounted for and that they should take into account all of the water that goes into the plant should be considered part of the discharge. That's our m main concern is that, and, and we've had meetings with EPA and with uh, DEP, and it appears that, that they are uh, starting to understand that. Well, from my working knowledge, this has been going on for years, there's documented support that shows that it's polluting Brookfield's water. Correct. Well, it, it had, certainly has an impact on the Seven Mile River and North Pond, South Pond, and the Quaybot River. Yeah. And, and what doesn't sit well with me either is that we have three out of 200 representatives that literally reside in the town of Spencer. Yes, they do. Um, so I, I appreciate if you would send a letter along to US EPA, US, uh, EPA and Mass DEP. By the way, um, Massachusetts is one of only three states in the nation where the EPA runs this national pollution discharge system. In all of the other states and districts, the, the state runs it. 
but in Massachusetts and two other states, the, the, the EPA runs it. Recently, the legislation was proposed in Massachusetts for Massachusetts to take primacy. In other words, for Massachusetts DEP to take over running the NIPTES permit. It never, never made it through the House. So it will continue at least for the was, foreseeable. Was that, a, was that a House bill? It was a House bill. And it never, never even made it to the floor. Never got out of committee? No. So I uh, hope that answers your question, and, and uh, thank you for your support. Uh, thank you. The, the draft permit is under review. Uh, it's our understanding that actually Spencer just had a meeting with um, EPA, and uh, I think EPA is giving them some. And Spencer's in a really tough, tough situation. They, they can't afford it, and it, it's all about money. It's, it's got to be federally funded. I mean, it's a federal agency. It's a federal regulation. Um, they, they're going to need to get outside help, absolutely, without question. Thank you. Thank you. So we send last motion, uh, entertain a motion to allow the chair to sign all three letters. Uh, make the motion. Second. Any discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I wish I could get some help on my pond. <laughs> North Brookfield treatment plant runs down Dunbrook. Yes, it does. And it comes right into my pond. Yes, it does. <laughs> we, can, we can get rattlesnakes on your property. No. <laughs> so, no, it doesn't. Uh, and that's polluting it too because you can smell it. All right, item number yeah. six, there is a petition. Karen, we talked about this. Did you have, oh, I should have brought I this up when they were here. And um, she said her, okay. All right. Uh, this is a petition by residents on Lane 21 to use the uh, reclaimed um, asphalt. Basically, in my opinion, I I don't know what their intent was. Herb made the recommendation to use it, so they're mm -hmm. basically calling him on it. Um, if he's okay with it, I don't think we need to entertain any motions. Um, if we could just stay on top of it, but they're okay with doing that. I thought you guys. I would have left a long time ago. God bless you as well. Are we okay? Are we okay with it, Herb? All right, so we have it on camera. So the residents, lane 21, Herb will be down. <sighs> Can't believe they're still here. Go home. A uh, special use permit. Entertain a motion to allow a Worcester County, you got to make these larger print, Karen. Worcester County Bassers, the, the use of Quaypog Pond from Monday, September 5th, 16 vehicles, 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion to approve the ice holders. It shouldn't be called the ice holders in September. Uh, the use of Quaybog for 15 vehicles from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. on 9 11. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Item number nine, Finney property discussion. Again, Mr. Snyder would yeah, like a, this. Just a quick update that Cindy Bruce and I had a conversation with uh, Central Mass Regional Planning where, where there is an opportunity um, with respect to Finney where um, there is mass development money, money available to do uh, some of these kinds of things. Uh, I would characterize it as kind of stick holding because uh, we can remember in our last last meeting, the last discussion on, on the situation where we were advised by council not to take uh, responsibility for the property. There is, under the current uh, legislation, a way that the town can in fact take some responsibility, I'll underline the word some, where we are looking for development of that property. So under the tax title uh, activity, there is a way that the town can be directed towards redevelopment. And uh, what, what we're looking to do is to have a follow-on meeting with DEP to understand exactly what the protocol would be, what we would have to follow to, in fact, redevelop the property. So I'm assuming through your, your diligent work with this that there is a history of it. Oh, yes. we, we've had the phase mm -hmm. two, we've had the recommendations, we had the cost analysis, we went to town meeting to take the property, advised by town council that evening not to because a liability would be mm -hmm. us. Yep. So knowing all that, thinking about this today, you had mentioned prior that there is a business interested in this property. There's at least two conversations related to the property. 
do you know if they would be interested in obtaining said property by pay by paying the Finneys their back taxes to make good with the town? I have no idea. And to take responsibility of said property? Yeah, well, I, again, I, I think we need to have this uh, discussion with the EP. But we might be able to alleviate all of it because if we're talking, if we're talking pretty wealthy companies that want this property, paying the taxes and fixing the problems really isn't a big issue to them. And, and if it's the same company I'm thinking, they literally took an old gas station in Leicester, leveled it, and it's literally like 10 parking lots yeah. now. And just, I think we, we don't have all the information yet. But I is that something that you'd, you'd be interested oh, in? Absolutely, absolutely. It, it, would, it would have nothing to do with the town. We would just facilitate that yeah. conversation. And I think they would let, if they were gonna let it go to the town, all they would have to do is be liable for the back taxes and for the lien that's on the property, and if they want to clean it, they can clean it. Yeah. So, I, I think, and again, I, I defer to Well, it's two separate roads, yeah. but I, I was just we, thinking about it Because I hate to see, I really don't think town should just take it over, because we're going to lose the That's not what he's talking about. No, 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 no. It, through the tax title, am I correct, Cindy? Yeah. Through the tax title process. There is a way that the town can, and I, I use the term stick hold this okay. thing, so it gets transferred through mass development to that en that entity. There's grant monies available for for that as well. So again, it's but it's a road we don't even have to go down because I believe with brownfields, if they purchase that property, they don't even have to clean it. They can just tar over it and make it a parking lot. Right, mm -hmm. but is not. Well, there wouldn't be any grants involved. If this company wants to buy the property, they would be responsible for all back taxes. They'd have to get a free and clear title, so they'd have to make good with the town. They would receive that title from the Finneys. It would be their property. And if their, their desire was to make a parking lot out of it, they wouldn't have to spend any money to clean it up. And even if they do, if they want to clean it up, they can do that within their own coffers. I just think, again, the reason for this to be on, I, I think this next meeting that we're looking to have would make us a whole lot smarter than we are today. And that I would want to have that, that discussion and then bring the alternatives back. Yeah. Right, I mean, that's, Cindy, I, yeah, I, I, I think that, that's wise. Do you, but do you understand <laughs> my logic? We have and again, a, this was just a thought today. Yeah. We have um, an abiding property that was affected. Correct. Yeah. That we want to show and take care of. So I think we need to. We were told that we weren't liable for that, though, at the meeting where they presented to us. That was one question that I asked. Yeah. Do we have liability for that? Well, and maybe can I jump on top of that? We have at least three documents that talk about something in tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands. Oh, it was hundreds of thousands. Yeah. So it, it, all I'm saying is we have three documents that give you that broader range as to what needs to be done to finish up. And so again, another reason why we really want to understand which of those documents is correct. But we had this discussion, the same exact discussion four years ago. They were willing for grant money to tear part of it down. They were going to leave some of it up. We had this, this they came and presented. Do you remember that? No. They, they made the, a present, the, uh, whoever did phase two of the... Um, yeah, okay. That's, so but, well, but, but, that's the $400,000 number. That's they, the correct. They, they gave the number, they gave us the, the right. scenarios of what we could do. The steps, grants, all that. It's a Foss and O'Neill. It's a document like that. Yeah. Totally get it. What what I'm saying is that is at one side of the goalpost. We have another side of the goalpost that's talking 42,000. So we have two documents, at least two documents, that are in conflict with one another. And so the reason to meet with the DEP folks is to say, this is what we're seeing. We have documents that are in conflict. Please help us understand what the correct path is. And doesn't the DEP, don't they have a lien on the property too? Yes. yes. And that there's, there's a lot of different tines mm. to this fork. Yeah. And, mm. we, and we see the importance of doing something now. Yeah. And I'm assuming that the ah. birth team's office really hasn't dug anything up or? No, they're unsuccessful as far as that path that they went. So now we have another path with DEP mass de as well as mass development. There is, there is a process. In fact, we were going to uh, receive some additional information of other towns that have had the same exact situation and how it got taken care of. Through that discussion, can you float the idea of um, relieving the debt to the yep. town of Brookfield or whoever? Yes. Yeah. 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 If we take ownership of it or whatever? Yeah. There are multiple liens against that property. Yeah. Okay. Which isn't the town, it's on them personally. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which goes along with any transfer. But the town, I believe, I don't know where the town stands priority was. Yeah, that's a good question. But time is of the essence. It's been yes. of the essence for years. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it is. I, 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 I understand. Yeah. Yeah. We, we really need to move. So if we can, if we can talk to DEP and get a, a feeling for. But with time being of the essence, as urgent as it is, having a discussion with that entity to say, hey, contact this homeowner, work something yeah. out, yeah. buy it outright. Yeah. Take. They might be welcome to it. You never know. You, you can't get a yes or no unless you ask. Yeah. Yeah. And again, we're, we're also looking to go from the pave over to maybe something else too with mass development. Yeah, right. Thanks, guys. Um, other, we already took care of one item of correspondence. Um, Governor Baker signed into law House Bill 4569, which allows all package stores to sell alcoholic beverages on Monday following Christmas when Christmas falls on a Sunday. Um, also, pouring permits uh, for farmer series licenses that already have pouring permits but not like to add their adjacent farmland or vineyards to the pouring permit. Please compete, uh, complete the necessary permits. I don't think that applies to anybody in Brookfield. No so Shoba Winery that applies. Hmm? We have a winery in Brookfield? No, I say it, no Shoba Winery. It doesn't apply. See, when I, when I think of that, I think of hard work. Oh, maybe. Yes. Yeah. That's something yes. that he would be interested in. Well, any yeah. any other issues before the board this evening? I hope not. I hope not. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I heard. What's that? I didn't hear you at first. Do you have any? Do you, did you want to say something? I called it to uh, Dan. Spoke to him. He said 13. That's it. I'm okay with 13. I'll, I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the wage authorization. We're going to need a new one. It's all written on. Um, we can sign that at a later date uh, for the amount of $13 for said individual. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you for motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys.